Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, folks. Michael Zuber, One Rental at a Time. And something I really love about the One Rental at a Time community is people will dive in and take on tasks or extra things that will help the entire community. So last week, John came on and shared with us the updates to the 50-year spreadsheet. And over the last week or so, he has added extra material. So John, I want to thank you for doing this. Thank you for uh, putting in the extra time because I want to do it. I just don't have the time. So the fact that you do these extra things is awesome. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. It's uh, an honor to do this because uh, I know it's going to help. Awesome. So uh, let's talk. About, so some of the things you've added, you've highlighted like periods of recession and some other things, right? What are some things you've added in the last week or so? Well, uh, I added the uh, 50 year, um, 52 years of uh, uh, minimum and maximum values. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, so that's uh, kind of interesting to see the high and low numbers mm -hmm. for that. Yep. Of course, the recession, recession years are uh, highlighted in, in blue. That's great. It's amazing to see how the red seems to line up in those years. Yeah, it's, this, that is something I've always wanted to do. I just never had time. I think that is awesome because, again, I haven't seen the update, uh, but it'll be, it'll be very telling, right? There'll be leading and, laid, leading and lagging indicators. Um, it's very cool that you added recession data, so that's awesome. Yeah, I also put in uh, U.S. GDP because it takes uh, two months of uh, GDP going down to have a recession year. Two quarters, two quarters. Two quarters, yeah. Yes, two quarters, yeah. Neg two quarters. Of back-to-back uh, -back negative GDP growth, yes. There you go. Yep. Yep, so. All right, well, let's um, see what you got. Let's see, uh, let's see this song and dance. All right, let's see. I'm going to share the screen here. Very good. Awesome. All right, you should see the uh, spreadsheet now. I do. Yep. And this will be the one that I will load in the bonus content. Um, so very cool. All right. Yep. You can see uh, recession years, uh, 73 through 75 mm -hmm. and 80 through 82, yep. 90 folks, through if, 90, 91. Folks, if you're not seeing it, he's looking at row one, which is the year. And he's highlighted the years in a light blue uh, for the years that are a recession. And even in uh, 2001. Yeah, you're right. Yep. And of course, our favorite years. Uh, the Great Recession, 2007, 8, and 9. Yes. Yes. And it's amazing to see. Look at all this red that just kind of lines up with it. Yep. So yeah. it makes sense. It, it really correlates. Yeah, the economy is a, is a complex, almost like organism with lots of moving pieces. The consumer makes up the lion's share, 68%. It is why I chose to focus on the consumer all those decades ago uh, when studying economics. I also like that you have um, consumer sentiment in here. That's something I haven't added. That is awesome. Uh, it, it really is impacted by recessions, as you will see uh, when people peruse the data. Um, you have US GDP growth. Uh, you have the S&P 500 uh, now as well. So. There's just so yeah. much data that people can consume in this. It tells a story. But what I really found interesting is wages seem to have a six to seven point uh, or percent swing over mm -hmm. the entire 52 year period. Okay. But the average, mm -hmm. we take a look over here to the right. The average um, no is right there. Wow. So what I get out of this mm -hmm. by looking at that value right there, mm -hmm. 0.17% yep. after 52 years, it tells me that wages follow the inflation rate over the course of the entire time. Yeah. I mean, that's exactly what you would hope to see. Right? And, and it's good that it's positive, right? You would hope it's positive. Basically what this saying is saying over 52 years, your average income will go up slightly more than inflation, slightly more. Um, that's what that says. And it's the min max is crazy. The max was uh, almost 7% and the minimum was a slide back of 6%. And this is the whole real versus nominal, which people still don't understand, right? You get all these reports like, um, uh, let's say they had Q, Q1 GDP was reported at 5%. 
Yay, 5% in the US economy is awesome. However, if you go in and you do the real calculation and you subtract 7.5% in inflation, you actually get a real negative GDP growth of 2.5%. So real, nominal, all these economists try to confuse people by spouting different numbers. So this is, this is pretty cool. Yep, I, uh, I showed that to my boss. She didn't like the fact that she's going to end up losing money this year. <laughs> yeah. And of then real at, buying power, you know? <laughs> yeah, no, exactly right. Exactly. And then look at real US GDP uh, line 21 which is something I did not have in the original. So thank you for adding it. Generally speaking, the US economy grows about two and a half percent. When you hear Jerome Powell talk about 2% growth, that's, that's what he wants. Um, yeah, and you know- and That's over year, the long term, 52 uh, years. That's 52 years. And again, it's grown from as high as seven uh, to a low of, I'll call it three and a half negative. So- um, Yeah, I love those- uh, Min and max numbers there. Yeah. And then also you put in there the down pair, down payment variant, or basically the number. I thought that was really cool. Uh, I didn't have that as well, right? You did the, you did the actual math. So that's pretty awesome. I'm just looking at this. This is so cool. And then also you have the data sources. Did you update the data sources? Yeah. So I'll click over to that. That's really important for me. Cause again, when people put out data, you just never know what people are doing, they sometimes skew information. So it's always important for me to list our data sources. So you can get the data sources here. If you have others, don't hate on us. These are the sources that we use to put this together. Yes. Um, uh, and, and you can always go check them if you'd like. Gotta go with what's out there and that's accurate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this is pretty cool. Let me look at this sheet again. I wanna go back and look at the 70s. Because again, okay. I think we're repeating- we'll move this. that back over to the 70s. Specifically 73, 74, 75. Why? Because 73, we had the oil embargo, which, oh, by the way, with the Russia's invasion of Iraq, I think everybody appreciates that oil is about to become a problem for the world. Energy costs are about to go up. So let's see what happened in 73. So first and foremost, Where's CPI? CPI. Line 14. Thank you. So CPI, look at that. Oh my God. CPI was started the year at six and it, it went up from there, it almost doubled. It went up 80% to 11 and then it ticked down in 75. Again, people keep telling me that we're not repeating the 70s. It sure feels like the 70s to me, uh, right? We have this oil issue. So again, we may feeling some gas price impact already, but oil is one of those things, John, that is in so many commodities that this is going to be a long tail if this continues. So that's the first thing I look at. I was one of those guys who was who was old enough to remember <laughs> the long gas lines that I, we had to yeah. wait for gas, and it was ridiculous. I remember. I remember being in the back of my parents' cars. Uh, and actually remember my dad getting out to push the car and my mom <laughs> and my mom steer it. I remember that. It was, it's a wild memory. So, all right. So what else in 73 jumps out at me? Oh, the S and P 500 goes down 20 some odd percent, 118 to 96. Again, you want to see what happens when oil and inflation kicks off. Doesn't the stock market doesn't like it. So the stock market fell 23% because that's a January to January number so that makes sense it gets jittery yes it, it, and, and what do you yeah expect it to get jittery and look at consumer sentiment it nose dives in 74 uh because mm -hmm. of the oil embargo this is this is all stuff that's happening right now you have the data 73 74 folks get in this spreadsheet go look at 73 74 because i think the 74 numbers are about what we are about to experience in cpi higher stocks down um, it's just, ah, uh, it's, it's, and consumers about to get negative. And of course, 74, we had negative GDP growth. Yep. Half a percent. So very, very, it's cool. a scary, uh, thought to see that, uh, it could get worse. Oh, it's going to get worse. I don't think there's a could, I mean, unless magically peace starts today, which I hope it happens. Uh, but uh, it doesn't feel likely. So if Mr. Powell does something, you mean? 
<laughs> oh, I meant I meant Putin. Putin's got to say peace, and then maybe oh yeah, everything. Powell is a whole different story. Powell, get off your butt and raise rates because you are repeating the sins of Arthur Burns. Arthur Burns was the Fed president in 73, 74, 75. Arthur Burns did not think oil embargoes impacted the economy, impacted monetary theory, and he was wrong. Arthur Burns is called the great inflation. That's his tagline in the history books. Jerome Powell, if you're listening, you are about to be Arthur Burns 2.0 if you do not raise by half a point in the middle of March. It is scary to see. Any other periods in here, John, you want to talk about? Well, that's basically uh, uh, what I really wanted to show you is what we yeah. just talked about. That is awesome. So folks, again, I'm going to get this spreadsheet. I'm going to load it this evening into the bonus sections uh, of the course. We need to thank John for doing this. I did not do any of this. John did this on his own. He's listed the data sources if you want to check them. Um, so John, again, thank you very much for doing all you do. This is wonderful. And thank you. Uh... We got a little uh, comment for uh, Matt, Matt, the mortgage guy. Yeah, let me uh, let me stop the uh, sharing because this is something that Matt, the mortgage guy, needs to do. Uh, there we go. All right, go ahead and do it. This is cool. Matt, I hope you're listening. All right, Matt. Here's uh, something you need to get yourself. You need to get yourself one of these. Yeah, simple lock and key. Look at that. So if you like it, lock it. Because if you lock in that mortgage, it could be the key that unlocks your future. I love that. That is so simple. I'm going to make Matt the mortgage guy watch the end of this. John, thank you very much for doing all the work. I love it. I love that hat, by the way. One rental uh, at a time hat. Much appreciated, buddy. Thank you. Thank you.